Also something to keep in mind, pretty basic, but Louis C.K. Listen, Listen, only, only under, under intimate, intimate situations, situations caress knob. <laughs> Great. It's been a year since the Me Too movement made headlines, and since then, we've realized that there are creeps everywhere. In Hollywood, on the news, in Orange Crux, which we should have seen coming, and now on the Supreme Court, for a second time. It's caused many to redouble their efforts against sexual assault, and others to miss the point completely. It's a very scary time for young men in America. Who are you, who are you scared most for, your sons yeah. or your daughters? I mean, right now, I'd say my son. Beyond the trolls, though, some men are taking it upon themselves to right the wrongs exposed by the Me Too movement. Meet Matthew Solomon. I am an empowerment coach. I specialize in relationships and communication. And I wrote the book, Man's School, Relating with Women in the Me Too Era. Do, do men need a class on well, not sending an unsolicited dick pic? Uh, a whole class on that? Maybe not. But as part of a class, evidently, because it happens all the time. Man's School covers topics like rape culture in movies, toxic masculinity, and issues that have stumped dudes for millennia, such as women are not men. What compelled you to write Man's School? Women started posting their stories with the hashtag Me Too. And even knowing the magnitude of it, seeing it there was so humbling and it was so overwhelming. But there were all these men who had no idea and they didn't know how to react and how to respond and because they would speak up and do the, do the stuff that people do. Things like harassment, gaslighting, whataboutism and telling women their experiences don't matter. Yeah, we've been on the internet. Do you find it ironic that you're a guy that has to explain all these things that women have been saying for years? No. Why not? Because I know that men haven't generally been listening to women for years. So you're like mansplaining sexism, which is... Pretty much to men. It's like good mansplaining. If you're mansplaining well, to men, maybe it's good. <laughs> if a man's mans... I don't know, I have... I've well, got lost in the, in the space continuum of sexism. Everything you're saying sounds great, but how do I know you're not like that guy who wears the feminist t-shirt, mm -hmm. but then like is secretly kind of a creep? Yeah. I'm not. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Okay, Matthew, let's put your methods to the test with a real man school. We gathered seven dudes in a room on a Friday to give them a lesson in how to be one of the good guys in the Me Too era, and also to hear from them. Welcome to Man School, unlearning 2,000 years of patriarchy. Thank you for being here. I would love to know from each of you and what you hope to get out of today. I realized how sexist I've been, and not even realizing that that was a problem. You know, it's been a continual process for me to learn how to interact with women, especially like compared to, I don't know, my freshman year of college where you get a ton of bad advice. I've been getting close in relationships, but once I hit a certain point, I kind of screwed up. I want to know from you guys, like, what are your fears? Men are becoming uncomfortable in their own skin because of what we're seeing. So is there, a concern about where the line is, what you can or can't do. You know, there are people who legitimately, when they interact sexually, like play, like play violence or something like that. Um, I think that that's maybe one thing that some guys are worried about. There is that fear, you know, hey, so you get with somebody in Palm Springs during a film festival and you have mad rock and sex because you drank a bunch of Tito's and soda. You know what I'm saying? Why does this example feel not hypothetical? That's okay, they're sharing. Why isn't there like a consent app where like people could sign in and you just like yes or no, you know? I think that would be uh... I bet there is a consent app. I bet that exists. But my understanding is that consent has to be a continual thing. So like even if you hit yes, I'm down right now, you have the right to change your mind unless the app is constantly sending you notifications of re-up the consent. Oh my God, they're pitching an app. Triggered. So let me ask you this. What are some of the things that you as men do to ensure your safety on a daily basis? I try to have different passwords for all of my websites. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in regards to personal safety, women have shared 34 things that they do on a daily basis. Want me to read these? Yeah. 34 things in, uh, this is... For their personal safety. Walk with our keys grasped between our fingers in case we need to use them as a weapon. Never leave a drink unattended at a party. Run across the street when we see men who look like they might be drunk. 
definitely do that. Make sure we're not the only woman on the subway or bus. Followed. Avoid next to a light post her. when it's dark outside. Decide not to open Facebook messages from unknown men who could see the message that have been read and become hostile and harassing. Yes, you do become hostile. It would never occur to me to do 90% of the stuff on that list, but it was shocking to see you go, yup, 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 to everyone you recognized. Uh, well, there's some ones that I kind of have questions about details on, like for example, if you do happen to be walking behind a woman at night, is it better to speed up and pass her, to slow down to build distance? I mean, what about bells? <laughs> Could also work. We have whistles, you have bells. We're just a very merry sidewalk. What else can we do to make women feel safe? Use our male privilege to call out problematic males. Mm -hmm. Go out and affirmatively express your support when there's an issue that's being discussed that's of importance to women. Some orange-haired knucklehead a couple weeks ago said oh, it's a rough time for young men in this country. We need to be held accountable, we need to educate ourselves, we need to educate our young sons. Her experience is her experience. The thing that she's telling you, that's what happened. So in other words, is helpful acronym, BRA, Believe Rape Account Homie. Homie, we believe those rape accounts with heart, open-mindedness, intelligence, and empathy. So we're gonna put that into practice? Yeah, let's put that into practice. And uh, we need a volunteer. Uh, Francesca is confiding in you something that happened you know, possibly a Me Too moment or a story with somebody who's been misbehaving. And so you get to, as the man, get her experience and support her in that moment. I don't, I know this is hard to hear, but your brother just grabbed my butt completely. Like, two hands, full palms. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that, but I'm really, really sorry to hear that because that's, that's not okay, that's not cool. Is there anything I can do to... Just tell them not to touch your friends, you know? Yeah, or tell them obviously. not to touch anyone. Yeah. Awesome, how, how was that? You know, I'm thinking about my own brothers, and I'm, you know, that would never, I, I, I can't imagine that happening without my own brothers, so it was hard for me to sort of put myself in a place where I would relate to that, but I suppose that in life that you kind of have to get over that because there are people in your life that are gonna surprise you. So, uh, so th for this next scenario, Francesca is gonna be playing the man who's saying inappropriate things about women. And so Juan here gets to speak up and be an ally. Brett is a really good guy. Like, I don't know what all these women are talking about. I never saw Brett act that way. I've known him for years. You're a dude, you're not gonna see it from him. But I was with him all, through all of high school, prep school, college. Obviously, she's doing it for the money and for the fame. Name one of Cosby's accusers, one that got famous. Um, there's a tennis player. Time out, awesome, awesome. So, so in this scenario, we're getting into the, the debate, right? What if, instead of arguing the facts, you came from, what do you suppose it was like for her? Interesting, so I'm supposed to try to get him to empathize with yeah. the victim. Yeah, try that. Okay, cool. Yeah. How about you have evidence of the rape before you go around accusing a bunch of men? Am I really friends with this dude? <laughs> what? what are you talking about? You've known me forever. Uh, yeah, it's Chad. Three hours later and these males are finally ready to be released back into the wild. You guys made it. You've done man school. Give yourselves a round of applause. And while there are no cookies for doing the right thing in real life, there are in man school and prizes. I learned about bra, believe, rape accounts, homie. I need to be more sympathetic in conversation and ask more questions, I think is the big two like things to take away. You don't really get too many opportunities to see people sort of open up and actually express what their innermost thoughts and feelings are about these things, especially men. So that was really refreshing for me. What should women understand about men yeah. in the Me Too era? That men are extremely sensitive. You know, we have feelings and emotions that we're not really taught that we're allowed to have those, and then we sure as heck can't express those. Do you think there should be a man school? Absolutely. I think there should be a man school, there should be a teen school. Relationships and communication should be taught as part of curriculum. So will men ever be able to unlearn patriarchy? Maybe not after one class, but hey, the first step is showing up.